And we are back on Professional Wrestling, the podcast. We're bros, not really pros. I'm Jonathan Cohen, a.k.a. The Chosen Lawyer. You've all asked for him. I've seen him live. My nephew would be having a heart attack right now if he got to be in this studio. He didn't believe me that he's coming, but we got him. He's the one, the only, from Hamilton Pro Wrestling, the champ, Bruiser Battersby. Bruiser, welcome to Professional Wrestling. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Dude, you're even bigger in person, man. I saw you walk down to the ring. I see you in the camouflage and you're sitting here and I'm like, damn, man, I'm feeling really short. Uh, was it a growth spurt in high school or were you always the big dude on campus? Uh, I was always pretty big. Uh, when I was younger, I was always, wow, you're really tall for your age. You, you look older than you are. And then, you know, you kind of grow into it, right? But yeah, I've, I've always been a big dude. Played basketball through through school and yeah. I thought when you came in here today, I thought I'm interviewing Matt Cardona because I see all these championship <laughs> belts and you're telling me your wife as well has several of them. Yeah. Buddy, this is where to be in wrestling, you know, carrying all the gold. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool to be to have what I have here. Um, it, it's it's good to know that companies can put their faith in you and that you can represent the company. It. uh it, it, it feels good, you know, it's like some affirmation or, you, you know what I mean? Like, it, it makes you feel like what you're doing is, it matters, like you're getting noticed, right? And once you got them, I mean, there's that, uh, there's the responsibility of being out in public and having the belts and you're going to events, etc. I got to ask you first question because this is, this is my first outing with the championship belt. So we got the chosen championship here. My nephew made it for me for my birthday, and uh, it's like the Million Dollar Man. When the Million Dollar Man couldn't win his own belt, he just made the Million Dollar Belt. Yep. So this is my Million Dollar Belt, and I love taking it everywhere. So I, I, I was researching, like, carrying cases. I don't know. It was, like, racking my brain. I ended up grabbing from my living room my blanket, wrapping it in the blanket, putting it in a duffel bag, and carrying it around in a duffel <laughs> bag. When you got the real gold, how do you carry these around? What's uh, the secret? They just they fit in my gym bag with all my other wrestling gear. Uh, I know some guys like to put it in their own in their own bag, but I got a I got a pretty big gear bag. It carries all my merch and all my gear, so it fits in there. If I get any more though, I'm gonna have to get another bag for them. You know, and I, I was I was thinking like velvet, you know, a custom uh, cloth, so it sits yeah. in there nicely. But it's all about the merch. I mean, let's talk about the merch quickly. You got the Hamilton Pro Wrestling representing. Yeah. I got uh, your trainer here, Rip Impact. Uh, Mason Rush picked this up for me, and uh, I love my wrestling tees. And, of course, Mason can't be here with us today, but he's here with us in spirit, yep. your colleague. Um, wrestling fans love merch. Have you noticed that? I've noticed. They do love it. So do you remember the first Bruiser Battersby shirt that you made and the first one you sold? Yeah. Uh, first one I sold was to some family members, uh, and it's just black and white bruiser battersby and there's barbed wire wrapped around it that's that's all it is i, I actually still have them that's still what i sell what generation of, of of shirts are you on now like are you on your third gen fourth gen like they they evolve over time right yeah no i still have the still the original from when i started still og still yeah the, i oh, i'm okay. trying to i've been talking to some people about getting a new design done up because yes. uh, I'm, I'm starting to run low on my stock but uh, yeah, still the first ones, still the OGs. Well, as the wrestling manager for Mason, I can tell you Mason knows his product. So you guys will talk and uh, he'll be happy to figure it out with you there. Because right. that guy's the king of merch, I can tell you. All right. I remember he did his first event and we're there and watching all, you know, the one thing about inter intermission and you guys come out, you meet the fans, you shake hands, take pictures. And I told him, man, that's what this is all about. Yep. Um, do you ever get like, stopped at Walmart, Home Depot? Like, do people recognize you? Like, how does that work? Yeah, I get I get it here and there. I'll get yeah. people uh, coming into my work and saying, "Hey, I, you're a wrestler, aren't you?" Or uh, I went to a concert last night, and I get there, and there's a group of fans that know me from from wrestling. It was actually in a venue that I've wrestled in. Oh wow! I walked in, and there was a group of four or five guys there. Like, "Hey, Bruiser, how you doing?" Like, so yeah, I get I get it here and there. I'm shocked that even, you know, you're able to make time to come here today. I mean, it took a bit of time because I know you're always on the road. You're either working or you're working or you're working. Yeah. And looking on social media, Bruiser, man, it, it feels like you're like literally wrestling every day almost, definitely every week. Like you have a really grueling schedule. Yeah. 
And man, it must take a lot on the body to put yourself out there that many days in a week and month, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's not easy. Uh, it's a it's a constant grind. You know, you you got to stay on top of it. You know, I'm in the gym four or five days a week. I'm in the training. I'm at, like at the training academy two, three days a week, couple hours each time. And then the show is on top of that, right? So sometimes it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, different towns each day. So you got to you got to stay on top of it, you know. I do uh, I try to stretch every day and I go to the chiropractor once maybe once a month every 6 weeks or so just to keep mm -hmm. it in check, right? But it's uh it's definitely taxing. I mean, people, you know, they they either they come to see the event and they assume the person shows up and does the event. To me, when I start thinking in the background, I know the logistics as a manager, it's like Okay, you gotta schedule the event. You gotta make it to the event. You gotta promote the event. You gotta actually wrestle in it. Then you have all the other events you're coordinating at the same time. Plus, if you're working any other jobs, and some people you know have full-time jobs while they're doing it in Indy, then you also have a personal life as well. Plus, you gotta sleep. Then you gotta go to the yeah. gym. Then you gotta eat. Man, it's like there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah. See, now if I was president of the world, what I would do, I would change all our clocks to 36-hour clocks. Because 24 hours ain't enough. I don't care about the sun going up and down. We go to 36 hours, 12 hours to work, 12 hours to sleep, 12 hours for fun. How does that sound to you? That would, that would make it much easier to manage the schedule. Because, yeah, 24 hours in the day, it's, it's, not, it's not enough. It's, it's just not working. Yeah. Now, researching your name, and I got to say, so I was like, I didn't know anything background about you when I first, when I first, first met you is when I first saw you in the ring. Come out, Hamilton Pro Wrestling. You're the champ, got the camel going, ferocious, everybody's booing you, you're loving this, your life is good. And I gotta say, man, like, I did my first time in Hamilton Pro Wrestling, been a wrestling fan my whole life. I can't even count how many events I've been to, how many thousands of hours of wrestling I've watched. I said, this guy's a champ, he's a champ for a reason. I get it immediately. And I'm like, man, I gotta meet this guy. So I go to do a little research, and I'm like, man, Bruiser or Battersby? What a name. Like, that just rolls off tongue. Bruiser Battersby. And we're talking off air, and I didn't believe you, and so you're going to tell us now for the record. I actually pull up your driver's license. I pull up your birth certificate. It's Battersby. It is Battersby. That's my family last name. Yeah. So you were basically born to be a wrestler. I was, yeah. Uh, like I was saying off air, I get the question a lot. Where where did that last name come from? Yeah. It's like you said, it's on my birth certificate, on the driver's license. We actually have a like a family crest with the whole history of the last name. It's an English last name. Amazing. Yeah. But like you said, it rolls off the tongue and I think it fits pretty well. Uh, that's that's your name, man. You're going to go to the only thing is, you know, WWE in the future, they may have an issue with the batters be part. Yeah, I know. I know. We can talk to them. We can massage. This. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll maybe we can work something out. Yeah, it's because it's. That's one of the things that's always bugged me. You know, once somebody makes it and they have the name, as soon as you get to that next level, they're like, okay, so we're just going to change your gimmick, change your name immediately. But AEW, they'll let you keep your name. So yeah. we'll kind of, as Adam Copeland has found out in AEW yeah. there. Uh, where did the name Bruiser come from? Just the damage you did to people in high school or? No, I, I don't know. It was just something when I was a kid growing up wanting to be a wrestler I just always thought yeah it'd be cool it fits well with the with the last name uh, and when I started to get into the business yeah. as I was getting ready to have my first match I pitched the name to to my coach at the time and he's that's good that's good stick with it so yeah it's it's not uh, I don't remember when I first thought of it but yeah. it was uh, it's it's always been something that I thought I would use it's it's you it's that I call the aha moment. I know for me I was driving one day and I was at a red light I think it was and I saw this sign of a real estate agent and he was looking to the heavens and basically telling people God is helping me bring you a house and I said, man that's so douchey but it's so hilarious and I'm <laughs> like, man he's like the chosen guy and I'm like, I should be the chosen lawyer and then boom it's amazing how yeah. you could just kind of click in. Yeah. Um, from your timing wise as far as like. Literally, like, were you, like, in the crib, two years old, and always wrestling people? Like, did you know me? Like, were you one of those kids always doing, like, backyard wrestling? Like, did you know from a young, young age you were meant to be a wrestler? I, I definitely always wanted to be a wrestler. Um, growing up, I've got five siblings. I got four older sisters and a little brother. 
So we fought like cats and dogs. Uh, I remember getting in trouble as a as you know maybe eight years old or whatever for putting my sister in the walls of Jericho in the figure four. Uh, our living room had this like display around the the door going out to the hallway, uh, and there was a little like crossbar on it and I could run I would do 619s into the hallway like I was always wrestling we had a trampoline in the backyard uh me and my brother would uh put it put it up against the deck yeah. and use it as uh like the the trampoline was the ring obviously and the deck was a steel cage so we'd have steel cage matches and we'd have to climb up on the deck and doing flips off and leg drops off and uh I didn't actually think it was realistic Yep. for a long time um i didn't even know indie wrestling was a thing i thought you know you had to wwe just had to find you maybe you had to be like a college athlete or something and they would they'd give you a call and they'd train you i had no idea that you could just find a school locally or somewhere in your area mm -hmm. um and then cwf the canadian wrestling federation yep. they do a big show every year in st Catharines. And that's where and, you're from. Uh, that's where I'm from. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I walked into work one day. I was working in a restaurant at the time, and one of the line cooks says, "Hey, uh, you, you're into wrestling, right? Hey, yeah. Uh, well, are you going to that that show coming to St. Catharines? It's like WWE or coming to St. Catharines? No, no, CWF. Like, wait, like you said that aha moment. Wait, there's there's other companies I can. So I go, I get some tickets. Uh, they had a couple. Uh, WWE guys there. Scotty Too Hotty was there and Grandmaster. Sexy. Uh, I think Renee Dupree was there as well. Yeah, yeah. So I went, I had a blast, and while I was there, they were advertising their wrestling school. Oh. So I, uh, I got the information on that, and the rest is history. I walked in and started my journey there. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Amazing how it comes together. It's, yeah. it's a sign, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And... Uh, when you first started the school, like, did it just take naturally to you? Did you say, man, this is for me? Or did you start off? Like, every, I, I feel like you're one of two camps. Either you come in and you're like, you're like Ken Griffey Jr., like natural swing, this is it. Or you do it for the first day, first week. I hate this. I'm walking away. It's not for me. Like, how, how, which camp were you in? I mean, I guess I'm kind of in both. Because when I walked in, I did one class and I realized I am way too fat for this right now. I was not in shape. I didn't really, I did, I did some stuff in high school, but then after high school, I kind of, I didn't do anything. I was, I was a bit of a bum. Yeah. Uh, okay. I walked in, got, uh, got real blown up real fast. Yeah. Left, decided, you know, I got to get myself in shape if I want to do this. So I spent six months in the gym doing uh, hit cardio every day and eating properly lost a ton of weight. I went from 250 down to almost 180, just like shaved all the fat off, got myself in, in some good shape, came back. And then when I came back, now I can move. It started to come pretty naturally to me. I got to say, even I haven't seen you for a few months. You're looking really chiseled. Like I got to say, I know you're putting, yeah, I, I could tell right away when somebody's putting the work into it, you could see it in their face. And you slim down, but like in a good way, like in a toned way. Yeah. It's, and that's great because as a big guy, you're very agile as well. Yeah. But if you're going to carry that extra weight, it's going to catch up to you real quick. Yeah. And like I said, I was 250 and went down to 180. I'm back up at 250 now, but I'm not a lump like I was. I was a bag of milk before, and now I've got some tone, some definition, and I can still move with, with the extra weight on. Uh, also, wrestling is uh, running in your family because your wifey uh, is in there as well. So you got a husband and wife combo over here. Yeah. And I'm sure that uh, if, if you're not uh, keeping on par to where you should be at, she's keeping you accountable. Yeah, she definitely keeps me in check. Uh, she She's in the gym probably more than I am. Uh, and she's chiseled. She is in incredible shape. A few weeks ago, she actually had one of the guys ask her, hey, are you... Uh you on the gas? You, you doing steroids? Yeah. She's not. She's just lots of beef and chicken and in the, in the gym every day. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, was this a thing where, like, she was a librarian and you brought her, and you're like, no, I'm going to do this to a whole different world. How how did how did she find her way? Or did you guys find your way in the same world? How did that come to So be? she's actually been wrestling longer than I have. She's over 10 years in the business now. Amazing. Uh, I met her through wrestling. 
uh, at CWF. Actually, that first show I went to, she was on the show wrestling. I think she was wrestling Tessa Blanchard on that show. Okay. Um, and I remember looking at her thinking, like, wow, dream girl, you know, way out of your superstar, way out of my league. Uh, and lo and behold, 10 years later. Um, so we, we really got to know each other at CWF. She was She used to be a transitional youth worker. So she would work with kids with disabilities, helping them transition from high school life to adult life. Amazing. And she was teaching a small group of them. Uh, she was doing a wrestling class with them, but she needed somebody to help out, just to help demonstrate and mm -hmm. just help handle the class. So I started doing that, and that's kind of how we got to build a bit of a friendship, and then it blossomed into our relationship now. Bruiser, you can level with me. I mean, this is on the record, obviously, but uh, you n knew from day one, assisting and being a friend, that you just wait your time and hopefully it'll come together, yeah. right? Yeah, play the, play the long game. So all those uh, fans out there that are in love with Mommy in uh, WWE, just help out with some of her, uh, you know, if she's, if she's doing extracurricular activities or volunteering somewhere, Come and lend a hand, and you never know that friendship may blossom. You never know. Yeah, if it's meant to be, it'll work out. I, 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 I'm I, just getting into the, the cut of where I want to be at with you, and there's so much we need to cover. I got to ask you, can we have you back in for a couple more weeks? Because you, you're just a fountain of information, and the fans need to know. They want to know survivorless Bruiser Battersby, where he's at. So let's bring you back in real soon. Is that a deal? Yeah, anytime. Let's okay. work it out. So stay tuned, folks. Next week, we'll get him back in because I got to dive in. and I got to know what's the ins and outs of the wrestling career and how one goes about becoming the champ. So this is professional wrestling. That's Bruiser. Jonathan, we'll see you all back real soon. Thank you.